What's up, you two? This is Joao for Trader Company. You guys today, man. I hope you have a great weekend all this time. I hope you guys enjoy time with your family. We have a new week of full of opportunities. Of course, it's going to be a super busy week, but we are ready to, of course, you know, prepare ourselves and be ready with our critical levels like always we do every single weekend. So, of course, guys, open your mind, listen, and, of course, be ready for this new week because I'm telling you, every single day has a lot of opportunities, but you guys need to be ready to take it. Be ready to execute it, right? You cannot doubt your levels. If you do know, if you prepare yourself properly, I'm telling you, you will be successful, okay? So, of course, I'm going to go over everything, you know, all the economic data that we have, you know, all the critical levels, and especially a few swing trades, you know, swing setups that I have towards you guys for the week. So, keep an eye on it. I'm going to talk about them at the end of the video, so stay with me, all right, guys? Now, what do we have? Well, let's start with what we have as far as, you know, the economic data, right? Because this is very important. I know so far this week is going to be a very, very busy one, right? I was just came in through the, uh, through the, through the reports, to what we're expecting on the week. And I'm telling you, man, it's just going to be a crazy roller coaster the weekend, right? Last week, market ended up on a super high note, you know, breaking out at a critical level. And I said before, you know, you remember last week, I said, look, we are breaking this downtrend channel, which is going to, it's a bullish continuation, right? We're we, we signaling this, this possible uptrend, right? We've been having this last week. So now we got to think what is about to come. Well, first of all, the market sentiment is right now and still in fear, but it seems that we are moving towards, you know, neutral greed sector. So that tells me that we are getting close to a pullback anytime, right? So this, this is why it's always important to keep in track of what's going on in the market, you know, what's the market sentiment, because that kind of give you, kind of could give you an idea of why it might happen the next days. All right. Now, as far as what we have on the week, well, you know, Mondays, most of the time we don't have a lot of reports. We don't really have none. And especially, and it's usually okay for that because we let us also the traders to take a step back, you know, take up our profits, you know, reassess our portfolio reassess our position say we made a mistake i usually tell my students do not hold anything through the weekend because there is no reason to do this right you want to have you know your mind fresh you know start fresh every single week so it, I, I don't really i'm not really like a big fan of holding positions through the weekend especially options you know could be swing trades but you know stocks but not options I mean not really you know you are getting theta eating the value of contracts if you're holding if you're holding contracts for the weekend right so keep that in mind right Tuesday, we are starting with CPI. So that's going to be, that is going to be a market moving event. So this is why Monday, you definitely want to be, again, reset, you know, close what you have and, you know, let, uh, you know, the market show you the direction because Tuesday will move the market, right? Either we have a big boost or we actually can have a big strong pullback uh, because of the CPI. And of course we have, you know, Fed speakers. There's like Loretta Messer speaking. There is Austin Goosby speaking as well, right? Then Wednesday, we have PPI, retail sales report, air petroleum. You know, we have more reports coming on Wednesday, and that it also will add volatility. You know, PPI is another report that it is, isn't that as big as CPI, but it does really, you know, affect the market in a certain way that it can create certain, you know, small pops, you know, small drops. It can do this. So you have to be aware of this, right? So Thursday as well, we have jobless report coming in. That is actually another report that it does kind of move the market a certain way, especially in the morning. And notice that all these reports are coming in pre-market. So that tells me that we have to be very careful this week as far as once the market opening. We will have big spikes. We're going to have big drops, but we could get faked out. People can get faked out. Traders get faked out all the time. And that was because they don't wait. They're not patient enough to let the market settle down, you know, uh, you know, um, digest the data and then pick a direction. You know, traders are so anxious to make money. And like I said before, people is too worried about making money and they shouldn't. They should be worrying about how to, you know, uh, master the skill and then, you know, trade the levels, right? We also have Friday, we have housing and start and permits report. So as you can see, as we have many, many uh, reports, important reports, and as of course, you know, again, many other speakers, you know, that is like Loretta again speaking on Thursday, John Williams speaking, Friday, we have Mary Daly speaking. So it's going to be a crazy week, right? So you have to be ready for this because it ain't going to be a easy, it's not going to be an easy week. I can tell you this for sure. So you cannot marry direction. You cannot marry play. You got to take your money and then move on to the next one, right? And as far as earnings, we have a busy week as well. We have most of retail companies reporting this week. You know, as you can see, we have Home Depot reporting on Tuesday pre-market, right? We also have, what do we, uh, we have Target reporting on Wednesday um, pre-market. That is uh, Ross, you know, most of the retail companies, Macy's, you know, Walmart, 
on Thursday. So it's going to be a busy week. And, you know, it's kind of like it's going to give you an idea of more or less how the consumer, you know, like how the, you know, this good and services, you know, the basic good and services is going towards this, you know, to the people right now. So be aware that, I mean, we don't have like a big tech company reporting now. So it's not going to really move the market as far as this, you know, this aspect. But it is always good to keep an eye on on these companies because it tells you really what's really going on as far as, you know, how the uh, people is, you know, with, uh, you know, buying, if they're not buying, if, if, you know, these companies are making money, or if they're struggling to make money or something is going on there. So it's always good to keep an eye on that, right? Now, what else we have as far as levels? Well, I was just looking at the levels right now in a minute. And what I noticed, and I'm going to show you really, really quick in a minute, is that first of all, and I say before SPY, this is was the downtown channel that I showed you guys on last week, right? When we were first just breaking out of the Antonio's look, we are breaking out. We have, we are signaling that bullish continuation. Well, now here we are. Since that happened, we moved almost $10 drop, open pretty much $10 plus since we broke out. But we are approaching to a big, important, you know, upper level. As you can see here, that is a level that being being several times rejected. You know, it's being bounced from there. So that is why you have to be very aware that we could be facing to a pullback, right? We could see a, you know, a healthy pullback if the, you know, if the trend lines still hold. But if they do break, then things can change, right? But so far, you know, there's also the case that it actually breaks this upper level and then it just goes higher. You know, it can go to 450s, contest 457s, you know, previous high. So everything is on the table. So we have to be ready for both levels, right? You, you cannot just you know, be a permable or a permabile, right? So for so far, when as you can see here, you see once we broke this previous area of rejection that we've been struggling several times, now we're open to move to that upper level as you can see here. But again, that level is important because the moment that it breaks, we're going to open to again, that previous those 450, fast, right? This is what's very important. Also, since we broke that previous level, now it becomes a strong support. So we can see a pullback towards such support and then get made bounce or consolidate around there, right? But as long as that support doesn't break, then we're going to uh, have an opportunity to consolidate, right? So what are the numbers? This is what is really important. So what I'm looking as far as resistance levels, right? I do have 443.69 and 444.80. Those are my strong, my strong levels of resistance that I have for the week, right? If we do actually, you know, able to break those levels, we're going to have the 449.04 level that is, you know, very high upper level, right? But keep an eye on, this is only considering that the market is going to continue with a bullish momentum, but that can change anytime with these reports, right? Now to the downside, what we're looking to the downside, of course, like I said, if we do push towards 443.69 and we reject, right? Then we're going to have these previous levels of support. So right now, we have 438, 438.39 as a support, right? We have the 435.71 support, which is the previous, the one that we broke. And of course, we have 431.43, right? So those are the levels that you want to keep an eye on as far as pullbacks. And as far as, of course, if it breaks the trend, because if we do break these levels, we will retest the 200 MA, which is a 430.72. Now, remember, this level, you know, the 200 MA tends to act like a magnet, and it does for to the upside and to the downside that's for both sides right so don't think it's only when you know, the market is rallying we can pull back to there and probably bounce from there right now where are we looking for tesla uh tesla as i said before we were heading to uh you know we we had this you know wedge forming and like I said last week, you know, we were struggling in this 20 MA. So the wedge is still intact. And the fact that we actually reject the 20, you know, this, this, this 20 MA on the daily chart, right, telling me that we're probably heading to the bottom of this wedge once again, right? Keep in mind that we fill the gap, right? We actually fill the gap down that had uh, when that, there was a gap up before, right? That Tesla actually created, but we did fill that gap, right? That is the, this is the gap that we fill it. And of course, usually when the market got, when the stock fills a gap, tends to bounce, right? And the same thing happens with you know to the ups to the downside, right? It tends to reject. So right now we have to think about it, what is going to happen with Tesla. Tesla moves very aggressively, and really, as long as it stays below the twenty EMA, I think that we're going to continue you know dropping. And this is why that's what I think. If the market pulls back, we're going to see Tesla retest in this previous this previous lows, right? This bottom line. So. So far, what are the levels that I'm looking at? And this is what I'm talking about. See, this is the part that we bounced previous on Tesla, right? Reject at the same time. But this is the time that Tesla needs to choose a direction, right? Either they break out, it goes to those previous highs, or it actually is going to reject this level 
and go back to support. So this is why Tesla is something that you can keep an eye on it because it doesn't look great and you know, per, you know gives very, very good opportunities. So for the levels, what am I looking for the levels? So to the outside, I'm looking for this 217.53 break, which if it does, we're gonna open towards, you know, retest of this 222.0 resistance. That of course is aligning with the 2021.18 daily E20 image. So this is a critical level that we're looking for a week, right? If, if Tesla breaks above this level, then of course we can think that it's gonna go much higher to 25s, to 30s, right? But if it does, and if it continues getting rejected, then we are gonna see Tesla lower levels, right? Now, what we're we looking for the downside level, we have 211.38, 209.23, and of course, 206.0 supports. Now, these numbers are very important because if Tesla breaks below all of those supports, right? If the market decides to pull back or you know have this huge drop aggressively, Remember, if those supports break, I do believe Tesla will go back once again below 200. And below 200, it is not something that you want, you know, for the bulls. Bears will take it over and you can see Tesla much, much go lower, like 190s, 180s, if that all happens. So you have to be aware of those situations, right? Now, what else we have for NVIDIA? NVIDIA has been absolutely moving crazy lately these days, right? I told you guys, last time NVIDIA was moving forward towards earnings, right? The train was there. The bottom was there. The buyer was there. Everything was pointing to the more upside. And the fact that we actually break those critical levels, you know, that like last week, man, NVIDIA is looking very, very strong, right? So far, I wouldn't, I wouldn't show NVIDIA just because the fact that train is super strong, right? Right now, since now we broke, now we have a current support of 480.44. You definitely want to see the level hold, and if it does, then Tesla will move towards the next resistance, which is 498.44. That will do, probably, in my opinion. I think that we might see the level towards earnings because they report, they report earnings next week in 1121. So they do have this week to achieve this. And of course, maybe, maybe we can have a pullback. Yeah, I mean, it is possible. Of course, if we break this, you know, for uh, the 480 support that I mentioned a while, this 480.44, yes, I mean, we're probably going to see pullbacks, which is fine. But I don't think that we haven't broke the trend. I mean, the bars are there. You know, the RSI is a little high, so 67, but it still tells me that it's, you know, more room for NVIDIA to go, right? So as long as the trend remains intact, as long as the bars remain there, we will see more levels, right? And of course, breaking the 498, we will see 500s once again, right? Because last time we were we, we went as high as 502.62 and were rejected, you know, very briefly. So we can... We we actually again we could make new highs this week because you see how be the most in be the most like seventeen dollars a day fifteen dollars a day so it's very achievable if the you know depending how strong is gonna be the trend this week right so keep an eye on guys guys and then as far as you know we're penny stocks what else we have for penny stocks swing stocks you know we've been swinging these stocks very continuously one that we actually been touching for a while now has been CYBN and I tell you guys this stock is really one of my favorites why because you know I like the you know the uh the catalyst that they really do have. So far, what we're waiting, it's on their top line. They have two catalysts. The phase one top line is supposed to come on the second half of 2023. They have a phase two trial plan for early 2024. So that's one catalyst, right? And this is the CYB004. The second one, they do have this. They had this break therapy designation, right? That happened, but they're also waiting for this phase two top line safety and efficacy data readout. That's coming in this four quarter. So it has to happen this, you know, this year. It has to happen either this month or next month. So keep an eye on that because any of this, any of this uh news will make the stock, you know, have a nice move. Now, what happened with they got down because they provided they made an offering, and this actually gave a pretty you know, very nice opportunity. Of course, I did tell my students, look, this is the time to get some because this is why you don't want to buy when it's high, you want to buy when it's lower. And this, of course, I did. And on Friday, I told you, look, I will get a starter. Yeah, so 350, I'm gonna get. A starter because we have the offering and the offering when is the offering closing the offering closing on 15 which is this week so 15 is wednesday so you definitely want to start accumulating in my opinion right remember nothing is financial advice i'm just you know providing the this setups but i'm not trying to buy sell anything go you want to make the dd for your for yourself as well check the levels but you know the fact that we close in november 15 they you know the offering it actually gave us a pretty nice uh, levels to buy. You can see it literally dropped towards the critical support and it bounced. And of course, I would love to, you know, I, I already bought some. I would, I'm glad to buy lower because I'm heading to not over like a month or two month hole, right? So keep an eye on that. I guess I think this is, this can prevent a good nice opportunities towards the future, 
right? Another one that I'm looking is TOI. And why am I liking this stock? Because I was checking on it and they had super strong earnings, right, last week. You see, I was just looking today. They had a revenue of 82 million and they increased of 26% compared to the pay year quarter, right? So the gross profit was 60 million, increased of 23% compared to pre year quarter. And a gross margin of 19.5 decreased from 20%. So things are going actually pretty good, right? So far, and I think this is why we're seeing this nice breakout. As you can see here on the daily chart, and of course, you can see on the weekly chart, TO has started breaking out. This is what we call a round bottom, right? It's cool down. And again, the bottom is not slowing down. The trend is not slowing down. The RSI is 75 on the weekly chart. On the daily chart, is 71 too. But the fact that we are trending up about the 200, mate, for me, tells me that we are into something. Again, you know, good earnings. Cool tells that we can move to the next level. I definitely see some resistance around $4, $4 you know, $5. So that is an achievable target if things start trending. Of course, my pullbacks might happen. You know, it's normal on an app trend. We need to see healthy pullbacks. So that's fine. Again, I haven't charted this, but this is my watch this week. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to make some levels. So of course, I'm going to drop it to my students and my watch list on the you know, community to check that out. And what else I'm looking at? There's two other ones that I'm looking at CAUD. This one we trade live last week. And of course, most of you guys that were on the live trading with me, we made some money on this. And I'm as well, they incredibly, they made, it made an 80% move on after hours Friday. And I actually kind of, I actually wanted to play that one. I played some of it. But the fact that, you know, the flow is around almost 600, right? 600,000, that's very, very thin. And this actually started getting some more attention, right? In this week. So I'm going to keep an eye on this because this is a this pack, very be down. They can actually, you know, make huge moves. Right now it's at 4.85, right? We have this four hour breaking now, you know, bottom is there. The, you know, the buyer pressure is there. We still oversold. I think that we maybe could be able to, you know, pull back those 9.53, maybe double digits. If actually the bottom surge, Right, even again, if the bars stay, you know, in there, just with very thin flow, things can fly away, right? So be aware and also keep an eye on it that they do have earnings coming very soon. So this is more likely to be a day trade than a swing trade. So keep an eye on those opportunities. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna again be on the lookout. But so far, what I'm actually looking at is a 4.85. There are two levels that I'm keeping an eye on: this 5.23 and the 6.25. With those are the levels that I, we can see achieve or break in order to go forward to like seven, eight dollars, right? So keep an eye on those. And of course, maybe we're going to see a pullback that was like 361, 399, right? Which is also supports and also aligning with a 20 EMA and 60 EMA. Those could be good opportunities to add some of the dips. And of course, we see holding the trend, right? But of course, if it does break the trend, then of course, this is why you do have stop losses. You risk man manage your risk properly, guys. Do not manage stock because these penny stocks are not for long term. I'm telling you, these are only short term moves. You take your money, they spike, you take money, you run, move on to the next one. Do not marry stock because I've seen people getting burned sometimes. They think that a penny stock is for long term. I'm telling you, like 98%, 99% of stocks, most of them, right? They're not long term. Most of them, they're going to end up going down for than they spike down. So keep an eye on that. And lastly, PRCH, one stock that I'm actually looking for this week as well. Why am I liking this one? They do have another crazy nice earnings. And this breakout is actually what I'm liking now. You guys know what I like about the setups. You know, it gulp up, this little gulp, create a higher high uh, candle the next day, right? Closing about a 60 May. And then Friday breakout, making a new high high. And this stock is actually 1.02. Buying pressure is there, right? Increasing pretty nicely. The, and then we have the, uh, the 200 May at 1.43. And what else, what else besides earnings? Why did this take pull back? Well, they did have, you know, baby, a lot of inside is buying, right? We had this form 13 days on Thursday, which it made the stock moving forward. You know, there are several PTs that I was keeping it now. They do have some, they have $3, $4 PTs, right? And I'm okay, man. That's, that's almost 200%, 300% return of them, the stock if it actually goes that far. Of course, we're always going to be taking profits on the way up. But I'm looking at, I mean, there we have, is, is, you know, the shorts are still stuck in there. So there, there are quantity, there are some, uh, there's some against hedge funds that are there. So we got to keep an eye on those. And of course, keep an eye on this, you know, this, this guy, they bought several shares, you know, this inside it, you know, this only you can see here, this Lamar, he bought 26,000 shares. And I noticed this is a very institute, a lot of institutional holding on this stock. So you see there are more inside of 26,000, 2,000, 2,000. So it is more 
going on there. And I think that there is only about time that this stock can really break out. And really, you know, the flow, it's around 75 million, 76 million. So of course, you won't see like aggressive, aggressive moves, but it's more like to be like a slow green, right? But I think, you know, again, for a dollar to 143, that's almost like 40, 50% gain. I think that really worth it, right? But of course, I will be buying those dips as long as he stays about a 60 million, as long as this 78, I will be buying those dips, right? So keep an eye on guys. And of course, if you have more questions, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, guys. We have more updates. I will keep updating these stocks for the week. And of course, more momentum stocks as we go. The market as well. So again, don't forget to again, check the link in the description as well. If you want to sign up with the community, that's what I have my trades 24 7. Oh my God. I'm a live trading during the week, of course. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Be safe. Be ready. Prepare yourselves. Let's get it this week. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. What's up, guys? This is Wild for Trader coming out here today. If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals and financial freedom you guys are looking for, you need to start investing in yourself. You need to start investing in knowledge. All right, so join me to the Alpha community. I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money. All right, so see you guys.